Hi and welcome to this tutorial on how to create custom algorithms. The goal of this tutorial is to show you how you can modify an existing algorithm to fit your needs. In our example, we will start with a genetic algorithm and extend it to support crossover probabilities. Let's start out by using an algorithm from the samples. I will choose the genetic algorithm with the TSB problem and open it by double-clicking it. If we have a look at the parameters page, we can see, for example, that the mutation operator actually has a mutation probability, but the crossover operator doesn't. The first step in creating a new custom algorithm is that we have to convert the algorithm to a user-defined algorithm. To do this, we click on Edit, Convert into User-defined algorithm. Heuristic Lab now copies the old algorithm in a new window where we can modify it. If we have a look at the Parameters tab, we can see that the Add button is activated and we can add new parameters. We click the button and in the dialog we have to choose the type of the new parameter and its name. We select the value parameter as this parameter should store a value, namely the crossover probability, and select this type percent value, as we want the crossover probability to be entered in percent. We see now that the crossover probability is added to the parameters and we can immediately modify it. For example, set it to 50%. In the next step, we have to modify the execution flow of the algorithm to account for the crossover probability. We switch therefore to the operator graph view where we can modify the operators of which our algorithm is made up of. Most of the algorithmic logic of the genetic algorithm is located in the genetic algorithm main loop and we therefore double click it to open it. When we inspect the operator graph, we can see, for example, the selection operator, the crossover operator, and the mutation operator. Let's have a closer look at the operator before the mutation. This is the stochastic branch operator. This operator decides based on the probability which of the two branches gets executed. In this case, we can see that the probability parameter is set to the mutation probability. If the operator evaluates the true, the first branch gets executed. In this case, the mutation. If the operator evaluates the false, the second branch gets executed, which is in this case nothing. We will now apply the same pattern to the crossover operator. To track new operators on the operator graph view, we open the operator sidebar by clicking on View Operators. We can see here a large selection of operators, but as we already know which operator is needed, we will search for the stochastic branch operator. You can use this operator by dragging it on the operator graph view. To include this operator in the program flow, we delete the connection leading to the crossover operator and instead set it to the newly created stochastic branch. For the case that the stochastic branch evaluates the true, the crossover should be applied. Therefore, we drag another connector from the first branch to the crossover operator. We can also see now in the properties of the operator that the first branch is now set to crossover. In the case that the stochastic branch evaluates the false, we want to skip crossover and execute directly mutation. Because the mutation operator expects to work on one solution candidate, we have to select one of the two childs which the selection and the child creator operators have created. For this task, we can use a parent copy crossover which randomly selects one of the two children. We therefore search for this operator in the sidebar and drag it under the operator graph view. I connect this operator now to the second branch of the stochastic operator and set the successor of the parent copy crossover to the stochastic branch before the mutation operator. What is still missing is that we set the parameter of the newly added stochastic branch to the crossover probability. I select therefore the stochastic branch operator and set the probability parameter to crossover probability. And that's it. We can now immediately try out this new algorithm by switching back to the main window and click on the run button. If we switch to the results tab, we see that it is running and we can have, for example, a look at the quality chart. So thanks for listening to this video tutorial and have fun creating your own algorithms with Heuristic Lab.